India generates more than 60 million tons of waste every year. And it's only increasing. A sustainable solution to tackle this problem is the establishment of material recovery facilities. What is a material recovery facility? A material recovery facility is an infrastructure to receive, sort, process and recycle non-biodegradable waste with the aim of recovering the maximum amount of recyclables. The dry waste is collected from different sources such as municipal collection systems, waste workers, waste aggregators and sorted into many categories generating the highest possible revenues in the market for the processed recycled material. How to set up an MRF? Setting up a material recovery facility requires seamless collaboration between the different participating bodies. It also involves a lot of planning, including the size and kind of the MRF, the material to be processed, the machinery, linkages with recyclers, collection systems, proper documentation and record keeping, and safe working conditions. In this video, we shall look at all these things and much more. Mapping stakeholders and ensuring their participation. Urban local bodies often face resistance when setting up an MRF in the community. To mitigate that, local support can prove very beneficial. That's why it is important to identify the stakeholders. Consistent engagement with these stakeholders helps build knowledge, networks and ownership within the community, which are essential for an effective waste management program. Assessing current policies, systems and infrastructure. The rules and guidelines for waste management that are already in place can help with setting up an MRF. This includes information about the current regulations, compliance requirements, environmental clearances, existing waste collection systems, as well as details on waste processing and disposal facilities. Conducting Waste Value Chain Analysis Many cities have well-established formal and informal waste value chains for key waste streams such as plastic, metal, paper and cardboard. These are our informal waste collectors, waste aggregators and other actors who form a strong chain by adding value to waste and transforming it into a resource and rely on its profits. An in-depth analysis of the waste value chain will help develop a viable revenue model for any MRF. Conducting an economic assessment Recognizing the full costs of all the required resources in the development and operation of an MRF is crucial to understanding its feasibility and ensuring its long-term sustainability. These include four primary costs along with other contingent costs. Technical Aspects of MRFs Setting up an MRF involves many technical considerations to ensure efficient and safe operations. The size of the MRF will depend on the quantity of waste that it needs to process, the available land and budget. Type of waste stream and process flow For an MRF facility to be optimally functional, it is important to analyze the waste stream composition at the design stage to determine what types of materials and volumes will be received at the facility. As these streams have different densities, volumes and quantities and require different processing approaches, their composition will determine the space needed for material recycling. Understanding the flow of waste in the MRF can assist in fixing the configuration and layout of MRF. Machine and Equipment Requirement MRF units employ varying combinations of manual and mechanical processes based on the type of facility, type of waste stream handled, availability of equipment, labor availability and associated cost implications. MRFs are either manually operated or they are semi or fully automated. 
Manual labor are employed for sorting operations for lower costs, with the trade-off being lower operational efficiencies compared with mechanical sorting facilities. An MRF unit, depending on the level of complexity, will consist of a combination of units in varying degrees of mechanization. Land identification and structural consideration Land identification is one of the primary requirements for establishing an MRF site. Its location, availability, access and surrounding area determine its feasibility. These facilities must be situated near or within urban areas where large quantities of dry waste are generated. They need to be located on stable flat land and close to existing roads for ease of transportation. The relevant government bodies need to review their land use mandates in order to accommodate an MRF in a certain area. All the necessary land permissions must be acquired and due processes must be followed with the pollution control boards and other regulatory agencies. Standard Operating Procedures The facility must be equipped with fire suppression systems and proper fire exits. Standard Operating Procedures SOPs, must be established and followed by all staff, including waste workers, to ensure that waste is handled safely and efficiently. Workers must also be protected by insurance in case of accidents or injury on the job. The facility must provide safe and inclusive work conditions for waste workers, including access to proper personal protective equipment and a clean and hygienic working environment. Investing in training and capacity building programs for MRF staff, including waste workers, will ensure long-term success. Proper record keeping is a must to track the inflow and outflow of waste at the MRF. This can greatly improve efficiency and profitability. Robust monitoring systems should also be set. Digitization of processes is encouraged to greatly improve the efficiency and accuracy of MRF operations. As MRFs achieve higher levels of resource recovery and operational efficiency, as they raise the safety standards and working conditions of workers, and as they increase their network with the scrap dealers, waste collectors and recyclers, the more feasible MRFs become. MRFs are an essential part of solid waste management and the circular economy. They play an important role in waste recycling and reuse, reducing waste entering landfills, waterways and oceans, preserving the environment and creating green jobs. By setting up these facilities, we can transition to a better and more sustainable future for our cities.